Welcome to My Vaccine is Jesus, where we strive for supernatural immunity from the wickedness of today's world by focusing on the inspired words of Holy Scripture. Today's discussion is on the response to Trinitarian questions and requests playlist and is entitled episode number 19. Now, this video is in regards to this recent debate between Drs. White and Flowers at First Lutheran Houston. As you can see, it's a two-hour, 26 minute, five second debate. You can find it here and elsewhere online. I would suggest you watch it all. We're going to see Dr. White when he starts to talk about John chapter six, verse 44. So let's see what he has to say. No one is able to come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. Please note once again, the verse ends with the same phraseology that we saw up above. In verse 39, when Jesus expresses what the Father's will for him is, he says, at the end, I'm not gonna lose any of those, but instead I will raise it up at the last day. Here in verse 44, no one has the ability to come to Jesus, unless the Father, the one who sent me, draws him, and I will raise him on the last day. It's very important to note that when it says, the Father draws him, this is the same him in the last phrase, and I will raise him on the last day. There is no contradiction. You don't have the the father drawing some people and the son not raising him up at the last day. It is the same hymn. If we're going to, many of the ways around this text try to insert a break in verse 44 to where you have people who are drawn by the father, but then they have to do something. They have their free will actions or whatever else it might be and those who are raised up at the last day become a different group. You cannot do that with the language. He who is raised up by the Son is the same one who is effectively drawn by the Father. But please note the direct assertion of the text. No one has the ability to come to me. What does that mean? Do we believe? these words. Remember, this is in explanation. Back at verse 36, you've seen me, but you don't believe. No one has the ability to come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Does our anthropology, does our view of mankind fit with what is taught by the Lord Jesus in this text? What does it mean to be drawn by the Father? What is a picture of that? It's very important to note that Jesus in verse 45 gives us a scriptural basis and description of what drawing is in verse 44. One of the mechanisms that has been used down through the years to try to maintain some kind of synergistic view of this text normally involves inverting the order of the words. So for example, Norman Geisler uh, went to verse 40 And you have the text speaking of looking upon the son, believing in him. And then he reads that backwards into the preceding verses to get rid of the emphasis upon the sovereignty of God in those words. In the same way, verse 45 is frequently used backwards rather than seeing that here Jesus is giving a prophetic text, specifically by Isaiah 54 and Jeremiah 31, He's giving a, the background from the Old Testament for what it means to be drawn by the Father. What does he say? For it has been written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. There is a specific group here. There is a specific group. They are those that are drawn by the Father to the Son. And he says, here's where the prophets were saying that they shall all be taught by God. Please notice they are the passive recipients of the action of God in teaching. It's not that he's just throwing it out there and then they will accept or not accept whatever else. No, 
they are the passive recipients of the teaching of God. And then that's also described in the one hearing passive action. You are something is coming to you from outside. The one hearing from the father and learning from the father passive action. Something coming from outside is what coming to me. We already saw all that the father gives me will come to me in verse 37. And so here, verse 45 is a continuation and explanation of how it is that the father brings this about in the experience of these individuals who are being given by the father to the son and that Jesus says he's come down from heaven to make sure that he will be a perfect savior in their behalf, they will not be cast out. So that's part of Dr. White's opening statement. Obviously, I suggest you listen to the entire opening statement to see what Dr. Flowers has to say and to watch the entire debate. Now, I'm going to start in verse 26, and I'm going to go here through verse 34. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. So this is the miracles of the five loaves and the two fish in the twelve baskets. He crossed the water by himself. The disciples followed him, and that's when he walked on the water, when they were out about three or four miles, and then they arrived on the other side, and certain Jews here traveled to find him. So these are the Jews who traveled to find him. And these are who he's speaking to. And notice what he's saying is, you came for a physical thing. You didn't understand the miracle. You didn't understand the spiritual significance. You just want bread. You want something carnal. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, right? This carnal stuff, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, the spiritual stuff, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent, right? Believe on Lord Jesus. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? So notice the sign, the miracle of the loaves. No, they want more signs. They want more miracles, right? So if they didn't believe then, they're never going to believe. Our fathers did eat man in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, right? The bread was given in the books of Moses. Lord Jesus refers to Moses, but my father give it you the true bread from heaven. So notice, it wasn't Moses who gave you that bread, it was my father, and now my father's giving you the true bread, me, right? Not the carnal, the spiritual. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world, right? I'm this living bread. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. Again, they don't understand. Notice labor. Labor is something that we must do, right? That's what labor is. So work. Right? Work the works of God. So God has his work, but we have our own work too, right? Work the works of God. You work the works of God. So God has his work, but you have your work and you need to do that work. You need to labor for that work. What's the work? Believing on Lord Jesus. So that's our work. Our work is to believe on Lord Jesus, right? Again, in verse 26 here in the King James, it says miracles. It's simea, signs. And the same word, Simeon, sign in verse 30. And what's interesting, let's look at near the end of John's gospel, John chapter 20, verses 28 through 31. So remember, this is Thomas when he's seeing the risen Lord. He's seeing three miracles. He's seeing three signs. Number one, he's seeing Lord Jesus resurrected like he said he would. That's a sign. No man could do that. God can. He sees Lord Jesus just materialize, I guess, in a room with the door shut. Again, a man can't do that. God can. That's the second miracle, the second sign. And then the third miracle, the third sign, is Thomas had stated, unless 
I put my finger in the wounds of the nails in his hands, and unless I put my hand in the wound of the spear in his side, I won't believe. And Lord Jesus, right before, before this, stated, hey, Thomas, put your finger in my hands. Put your hand in my side. So again, Lord Jesus proved he's not just a man because he heard what Thomas said when he wasn't evidently in the room, yet he was because he was God. So that's why Thomas declares what he declares in verse 20. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God, O Kyrios Mukea Theosmo. He knows this is his Lord, this is his God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, right? You've seen three miracles. You've seen three signs. You've seen this with your eyes right in front of you. Thou hast believed. That's why you believe. So you believe I'm your Lord and I'm your God, which I am because of what you've seen. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. So wow, it's all about believing. So imagine how blessed you are if you don't have to see it and you, you still believe. And many other signs, many other miracles, truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written, these miracles, these signs, including what we saw there in John 6 regarding the five loaves and the two fish, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So to have eternal life, we need to believe. That's our labor. That's our work. And again, Simea, signs, miracles. So the whole purpose of St. John's Gospel is for those who read it to see and believe upon Lord Jesus as their Lord and their God, the Christ, the Son of God, right? Continuing, John chapter 6, verses 35 to 40. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. So notice, they're seeing, but they don't believe. So it's the complete opposite of the blessed. The blessed are those who believe without seeing. These saw, but didn't believe. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So let's define these terms, not going backwards, going forwards, starting in verse 35. Notice, cometh to me is connected to believeth on me. Oh, so coming means believing. So when we come to him, we believe on him. Seen me, believe not. Notice, seeing does not necessarily equate to believing. So you can see and not believe. They're not the same thing. Just because you see doesn't mean you believe. And notice, some people can believe without seeing, it appears. So notice, giveth me, come to me. Well, come is believe. So giving means coming, believing. So if the Father gives someone to Lord Jesus, those came to Lord Jesus and believed on Lord Jesus. So if the Father giving means they believe and are blessed. Give me. Given means those who come, which means those who believe. So notice this is what these words mean, defined by Lord Jesus, not going backwards, going forwards. Come means believe. Being given means coming, means believing. So notice, seeing and believing, that's what it's all about. Those who see and believe will be given and will come. So this is what these terms mean going forward. Now, notice this. All of which I have been given, I'll lose nothing. Now, John 17, 12. While I was with them in the world, these are the disciples, I kept them in thy name, speaking to the Father. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept, referring to the disciples, and none of them in lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled. So notice, what does that suggest? It appears Judas saw and believed, but then stopped believing. So imagine how anti-blessed he is. And then, regarding the will of the Father, let's go back to John chapter 1, the prologue, verses 9 through 13 here. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, right? He came unto the Israelites. He came to the Jews. 
but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to the, the, them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of the will of God. Which again, we see right there in John chapter six, verses 39 to 40, to see and believe upon the son, right? That's what it's all about. So notice, Lord Jesus came to the Jews, but only those who received him would see and believe, would come to him, would be given. So notice, he came to them, but then they needed to come to him, which means seeing and believing, and they are thus given by the Father. And one final point before we move on. Here's the Greek, part of the Greek of verse 40, regarding everyone which sees the Son and believes on him. Pas o theoron ton yon kepistevon isafton everyone beholding the Son and believing in Him. So notice, everyone who beholds the Son or sees the Son doesn't believe on Him, right? There are those who saw but didn't believe. There are those who beheld but didn't believe. Because this is really important, because notice, you can behold but not believe, you can see but not believe, and it's everyone here, paso theoron ton yon kipistevani safton. Notice the wording, because you're gonna see the exact same wording in verse 45, referring to everyone hearing and learning in the Son. So everyone hearing and learning, just like in verse 40, everyone seeing doesn't believe, everyone hearing doesn't learn. Remember that point. Let's continue, including the verses in question. We got John chapter six, verses 41 through 51 here. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. Again, they don't understand. They see, but don't believe. They don't understand the spiritual. It doesn't matter how many signs, how many miracles they would see, they would never believe. And they said, is not this the Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith I came down from heaven? So they just can't understand at all. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, murmur not amongst yourselves. No man can come to me except the father which hath sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. So we know what come means. Come means be given. Come means see and believe. What does draw mean? It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Remember, cometh is being given, is seeing and believing. So notice you need to be taught. You need to hear and learn, though. Okay, so let's see what these terms mean. Let's continue first, though. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father, right? The Son has. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So can come draw. Okay, no, no man can come, which means what? Be given and believe unless the Father draws him. So you know what come means? Come means be given. Come means believe. That's a labor, a work of the person. They need to see and believe. And by the way, all they really need to do is believe because if they believe without seeing, they're blessed. So what does draw mean? It means being taught. Oh, so being taught of God is what drawn means. And we're not going backwards. We're going forward. Again, we didn't know what draw meant until it's mentioned here in verse 44, and it's defined in the next verse. It's not defined earlier. Come is defined earlier. That's being given and believing. Drawn isn't. Drawn means being taught. Notice, to be taught, you have to hear. So being drawn means being taught involves hearing. But notice you have to learn to come. So one must learn in order to come, to be given and to believe. So again, God has his work, but we have our work. God's work is drawing us, right? But we need to learn. God's work is drawing us and making us hear. See, he came to his own. God did his work. He came to the Jews. He came to the Israelites. Here's the Lord Jesus who is God, the Christ, the Son of God, speaking to them. He's doing his work, but they're not doing their work. They're not learning. They're hearing, but they're not learning. They're seeing, but they're not believing. So hearing and learning are like seeing and believing. So notice, just because you see, you need to believe. So seeing and believing, in fact, all you need to do is believe. And if you do it without seeing, that's blessed. So do you just have to hear? No, you have to hear and 
learn. Just like you can see but not believe, you can hear but not learn, you can be taught but not believe, you can be taught but not learn. God does the drawing, that's his work. God does the teaching, that's his work. God makes you see, that's his work. God makes you hear, that's his work, right? By the will of God, they were there right there hearing and seeing him and they still did not believe and they did not learn. But you choose to believe, that's your work. You choose to learn, that's your work. You choose to come, that's your work. You choose to thus be given. Now let's look at the Greek of verse 45. Estin gehramenon entis profites. Oh, it is written in the prophets. Okay, there's nothing fancy about the Greek here. Continuing. Que esonte pantas didacti theu. And they will all be taught of God. Okay. Pas o acusas para tu patros que mathon ergete pros eme. Everyone having heard from the Father and having learned comes to me. So who comes to him? Not just those who were taught, because everyone was taught. All these Jews were taught. He came to his own. They received the prophets. They were taught of God. They had the books of Moses. They knew about the manna from heaven. They knew it all, but they never learned. They were taught, but didn't learn. So notice they heard, and these ones even saw, but they didn't learn, they didn't believe. This is what this means. God has his work, we have ours. Isaiah 54, 13. So is this referring to this? And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. So they're going to be taught, yes, but they need to learn. They're going to hear, but they need to learn. They're going to see, but they need to believe. Jeremiah 31, 34, another possibility. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. So they're all, these ones here, though, these haven't just been taught. Notice, they know him now. They don't have to be taught anymore. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So obviously, Jeremiah 31, 34 is surely not referring to unbelieving Jews. These have all believed right? They don't even need to be taught anymore. They don't need to hear. They don't need to see. They believe. They're blessed. They've learned. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times, a guy referring to the person of God the Father, at sundry times in a diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. This is how they were taught. This is how the Jews were taught. He came to his own. These were taught by the prophets, the fathers hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So as the old covenant was taught by the prophets, the new covenant is going to be taught through Jesus by the church, by the Son. And here we have draws, 644. El kisi, draws. Where else do we see that term, by the way? John 12, 32. And if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And he is going to be lifted up from the earth. And it's the same Greek word. See, Greek strong 1670. El that's in uh, 1232. So notice John, St. John uses this Greek word, Greek strong 1670, in two verses. John 644, and then again in 1232. In 644, the Father's doing the drawing, and, and this was in the past. These are to the Jews, the Israelites. They've been taught, right? They heard, they saw, but they need to learn. They need to believe. And so do we in the New Testament. So notice, he drew them, he taught them, he made them hear and see. But guess what Lord Jesus is going to do it after the crucifixion, resurrection, right? Through the church. He's going to draw. He's going to make us see and hear. But we need to learn. We need to believe. So the Father, through the prophets, taught the Israelites in the Old Covenant, and Lord Jesus, through the church, teaches the world through the New Covenant. And again, learning, it's what we do, the act, process, or experience of gaining knowledge or skill. The teacher's not doing the learning. The teacher's not responsible for the learning. The pupil is. We are. That's our work. God's work as the teacher is teaching. Our work is learning. Knowledge or skill gained through schooling or study, behavior modification, especially through experience or conditioning. We do the learning. The student does the learning. The student needs to believe, right? The teacher makes you see. The teacher makes you hear. The teacher teaches. 
we do the learning, right? A teacher is responsible for teaching. That's their work. work. That's God's work. But a student, us, is responsible for the learning, right? That's obviously the case. Uh, Dr. White is suggesting that God's doing the learning. No, we're doing the learning. God's doing the teaching. God's doing the drawing. God's making us see. God's making us hear. But we need to learn. We need to believe. Continuing, John chapter 6, verses 52 to 59. The Jews therefore strove amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? See, they don't understand it all. They don't understand it all. Then Jesus said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, he even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from the heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, Again, they referred to it earlier. They were referring to what they were taught. Notice, they were taught, they heard, they saw, they never learned, they never understood, they never believed, and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Continuing, verses 60 to 65. Many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at him, so as they're murmuring too, he said to them, Does this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before, which is what's going to happen? Are you going to be offended by that? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Again, it's not about carnal, it's about spiritual. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they that were that believe not and who should betray him. Obviously, Judas included in that latter group there, right? Because remember, Judas saw and believed, then it looks like he stopped believing the antithesis of being blessed, right? Cursed is what he is, right? Cursed more than any man. So notice again, they didn't believe, right? They didn't learn. They saw, they heard, they were taught, but they never believed. And he said, therefore I said unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Notice he goes back to coming and giving and believing. Yet again, come, given. Again, coming and being given equates to believing. That's our work. Finishing off, John chapter 6, verses 66 to 71. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him because they never really believed. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered them, right? They see, they believe, right? Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Again, referring to the one who would betray him. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve, who evidently saw and believed, but then stopped believing. And again, interesting, this statement of Peter is in every one of the Gospels. John 6, but then we see it in Matthew 16, 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, the exact same warning we see here in John 6, 69. Mark 8, 29, And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Peter answereth and saith unto him, Thou art the Christ. And then finally Luke 9, 20, He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Peter answering said, The Christ of God. So it's pretty obvious that what Dr. White was stating there, and again, please look at the entire debate, is false. Learning is not done by God. It's done by us. That's our work. God has his work. We have our work. The words are defined, what coming means, what being given means, what being drawn means. It's all defined. And the problem is it shows that Calvinism is false, which it obviously is. That does not support Calvinism. It completely refutes it. God is his work. We have our work. God makes us see and believe. God teaches us. In the Old Testament with the Jews, that was through the prophets. In the New Testament, after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is through the church. That's our work, right? And notice, you're blessed if you believe without having to hear, without having to be taught, without having to see. Most of us need to see, need to hear. That's God doing the teaching. That's Lord Jesus through the church doing the teaching. And that's how we believe to achieve eternal life. That's our work, okay? God does his work. 
We have our work. God is perfect in his work. We are able to do our work, and we choose whether to do it or not do it, whether to believe or not believe, whether to learn or not learn. Amen. I pray that was edifying for you all. I pray I spoke truth and interpreted Holy Scripture correctly so that this discussion might have been a blessing to you, the viewer and listener. All truth comes from God. Any errors were my own. If you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up, positive comment, share. If you haven't already done so, I'd greatly appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. Again, if you don't like the video for whatever reason, feel free to give it a thumbs down and or a negative comment. But again, if you do give it a negative comment, I hope you've watched the entire video and please point out to me what I stated in this video that you believe is wrong. God bless and keep you all. Come Lord Jesus.